powder over. This is a nude I mixed myself, so I know a lot of you guys can ask, what nude is that? If all my students in here, if you're a student here, please post this uh, live in the group so that this, I always let my students watch me do nails af even after class or before class, before the class happens. It's because I want you guys to get like kind of pre-training before you take the class or continue education after the class, okay? So I'm the first nail, the base nail here. So now I'm gonna go for the cuticle bead. I gotta figure out what's wrong with my phone. My, actually, the Facebook app on my phone it won't let me go live. You now, when you post and you have to go, yeah, you post and it gives you the option to post pictures and go live. It only gives me an option to check in. I'm like, damn. Must be like a glitch or something. I have to report the problem. Hopefully, it gets fixed. Just when I announced I was gonna go back on doing now live Q and A's too. Funny how that works. So yes, two beads. You get the nice apex already. I'm gonna flush. I'm gonna flush this cuticle area a little bit more. Less work for me later. Okay, bring it down a little bit. See. Shape my acrylic. Get my shape nice and pristine. So go ahead and hit that share button for me guys, please. Perfect application, thank you. Let that bead marble a little bit first. Give it about three seconds. I always give a bead about three seconds to do his thing. And if it's dry, I, if, it, if I know if it's dry, I just know I gotta work faster. If it's wet, I'm gonna you know hold the bead there a little bit longer, um, clean my brush, and just bring the powder over. And when it's ready, see how it stopped moving? I'm gonna know that I'm able to move the powder through. Very nice and easy, just like that. So it transitions the powder very evenly through the nail instead of having it you know too wet too dry then it has like you know thick areas thin areas there a lot of people like to tap the acrylic downward i don't like to do that because i want to be able to work with my powder when this actually i could stay and plus i like to sculpt out my acrylic a little bit to get my shape these are my coffin tips on my mice the little tips so sometimes at the tip it's a little bit thinner so this gives me the ability to work with a kind of medium dry and then i can also like sculpt out and give it more squareness there. And then a second bead. Let's see, one, two, three, see a marbles? That's when I know, I'd rather have it dry on the brush and be ready for me to work with. See, it's a little bit dry, so I work a little bit quicker than I have it running all over the nail. Tap the cuticle area down. Blend it in, still give me the apex, see? Yeah? And I can only, I can do that with just two beading. It's how I move the powder, my positioning, and everything. So now since I'm done with the, the nude, I'm gonna go back to the blue. This is the Little Blue by Wave Gel, the new formula, very nice. Okay. 
So this is the pigment powder, so of course it's gonna be a little bit more softer. We'll give it three seconds, see that marbling effect? I figured this out that only with my monomer it has a marbling effect like that. For, because the last two classes that I worked, that I, I taught, I didn't have enough monomer to bring to send the class. So I actually um, used like whatever is local monomer. And I was trying to show the marbling process and it didn't marble and I was like, what the hell is going on? I guess not all monomer are the same. So my monomer gives you that marbling effect, but others don't. You see that? I'm moving lightly from side to side. See how that tip is thinner? But I'm gonna want it a little bit thicker, so I'm with the powder dry a little bit so I can sculpt it. See that? I'm gonna sculpt it in lightly so it fills up that gap. See that? Now it's nice and square instead of having that little dip at the tip. You gotta sculpt it out with the tip so the tip's nice and square, okay? Nice and boxy. Because the longer you have your stiletto cut down, you see how it has a little bit of a curve in? You have to sculpt that out. You like the monomer, Edgar? Thank you. I know a lot of students that, that's why, you know, the reason why my monomer gets sold up so much is you guys understand, all my students use my monomer and I have a lot of students. So yes, whenever they're in stock, they're gonna just scoop it up. Every time someone's like, I, I went to look for your monomer and it's already out of stock. Yes, unfortunately, I am sorry. You can blame my students for that. They're hogs. They're hoarders. If it's too wet, just let it dry a little bit more. Blend, blend, blend lightly with your brush. I feel like I'm, I almost feel like I'm only supplying monomer for my students because every time I get it in stock, I don't want to stock up too much. It's out of stock within like a week. <laughs> See? This is by Wave Gel. It's a very nice and buttery color acrylic. And honestly, guys, like, it reminds me of Valentino, but actually you don't have to cap it. It dries pretty nicely. It's such a nice pigment and it's such a buttery powder, especially with my monomer's medium setting. I think this monomer, if, if this powder, if you used it with um, any other monomer, it, like uh, EMA, that's not medium setting. It would be pretty runny, but since my monomer is medium setting, it actually is a perfect combination with wave gel. So now that it's like a nice, see that? It doesn't marble or anything. And you can, when you wait it for long enough, it'll, you'll be able to move it. And of course, when I get to the tip, you guys see that little gap right there? I'm gonna sh zoom in for you guys. See that there? I'm gonna actually mold this out. See that? So that I don't see that gap. So now you have that nice shape. That's how you shape that out. Kind of a little bit of sculpting technique. And you can't do that when the powder is wet. Because then they'll just, they'll just try to take in the shape of the uh, the tip. So you have to do it when the powder is a little bit dry and now dented. And by the time you get to the tip of the nail, of course, it's going to be more dry than when you first worked on it, right? So you have to really time that really well. This bead, I'm just going to nudge up to the cuticle area. And I want to flood the cuticle area and I want to nudge up there. I finally got back to doing late night Q&As and I really enjoy it. I can't, you know, I've been lazy and I've been tired and I feel like going to the gym. Once you start going to the gym, I used to be religious with it, like going to the gym. Then I got lazy and then, of course, all the excuses of, well, I did have a lot of teaching and I was traveling a lot, but still. I always have enough time for the fans to have a cup of wine and talk about nails, right? So you see what I'm doing here? I'm blending that first bead into that second bead. I wanna make sure that it's a nice blend, okay? So that I have a nice transition. Sorry, I'm like breaking your finger. That's okay, I want that nice transition because later when I file, I don't want any uneven surfaces. Which means probably put a little bit more here.
here, to be honest with you. It's a little bit thin at the tip, kind of ran out of the powder or something like that. And I'll blend it up. This is my last finger. I wish it. You see, I just leave the powder there. I don't tap the powder down. Only time I ever move the powder down is when I'm using my brush motions. The best way to move the powder is with the brush. This is a brush, you brush. A lot of people tap, 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 tap when it's wet. I don't know, I don't like it because I feel like it's inconsistent. When you're tapping wet powder, it's making it, you know, move this way, that way, this way, that way. And you don't have that consistency, like that smoothness that you can have with a brush. Like when you're stroking the acrylic with a brush, look at this. It perfectly mends everything in. Any little bumps and pieces will come in together, okay? You don't have to tap, because it's about powder manipulation. Tapping puts a lot of trauma onto it. And I do see people do that, and it's okay. I mean, there's different techniques, each their own, but I really like utilizing the brush just to brush the acrylic, because it caresses the acrylic and gives it a nice smoothness. You know, a nice even smoothness. It, it cr brings everything in together. Bring this out a little bit. This blue is called Big Little Blue from Wave Gel. Watch the marbling. See that? Ah. When it's nice and marble, I know to put it on because I know that's not going to be running all over the place. Some more dry, we're gonna blend it in. And look at that. There you go. And that's it, guys. You don't have to cap this powder at all. Once again, this is Wave Gel. You can get Wave Gel right there at wavegelshop.com. You can get some promo code now, Dad. I'm guarantee you their new powder is really amazing. Um, nice and buttery. You guys can cap it if you want, but I don't really cap it. I put just enough. I don't want to add more work for myself. I'm gonna clean my brush real quick. Brush clean is very important. Got to check, make sure there's no acrylic dried up in there. I do a, like, I kind of feather, I, a feather technique. I feather my finger through like this. And when I feel that it's gonna be clumpy somewhere, I use that monomer and just slightly press. Because when you've been working with this brush this whole time, um, it's wet with monomer, so the, whatever acrylic you had in it that's dried up, it's probably gonna be breaking down. So then you'll be able to squeeze it out. And once you feel that, it's, you'll feel it, okay? Don't just visualize it. Sometimes you can see no acrylic out there. There might be acrylic inside, in the, in, the, in the brush itself. See, when you feather through, it's like that. And all my brushes, I used the 14 today, are crimped. And see, I train my brush where I want it. So next time I use it, it'll be like just like this. And that is the application process, yeah. It generally takes me a lot less than 30 minutes for ending my application. So now we go to shaping. Act like riding a bike. How's Vegas hot? Hell yeah, it was hot. Jesus, Vegas. I don't know why I chose July in Vegas. I didn't choose it, Vina did. So shaping, of course, I'm gonna probably do minimal shaping because I shape with my brush. So I'm just gonna go through and clean up any excess underneath, bring in the, you know, crisp the sides up a little bit. That's about it. And this powder, it, as nice and buttery pigmented as it is, is it dries, you guys see that? It dries, unlike some other powder, it won't dry. See, and you have your shape right away. You just have to do quick movements, see? Your shape is there. Um, I don't really spend that much time shaping because I shape with my acrylic brush, so I don't want to ruin my shape either. I have a lot, I only have a small room for air for shaping. So if I shape too much, I actually take away the shape and it's actually not, not a good thing. This 
See that? Boom. There's your shape. Takes me less than maybe 10 seconds, eh? This is uh, my 100 by 100 file. Literally, that's all, that's all I'm gonna do. You guys hear me talk about this before, but a lot of people spend too much time shaping. Shaping should be the quickest thing you do in the whole set of nails, believe it or not. You wanna get under one hour, one and a half hours per full set, whatever design you do, get this process out first. Give yourself more time. Um, it's not at the Millennium Mall, it's next to the Millennium Mall. It's uh, next to Alta Beauty in front of Ikea. perfect you can't really complain there we go everything cuticle to cuticle about the same length let's double check that this one's a little bit longer so i'm gonna bring it out a little bit more i always measure cuticle to cuticle i don't measure with the base because every base of the nail is different sizes especially the pinky i always see people have the really small pinkies it makes no sense make sure you cut the pinky last Hey Jennifer, I saw the Raiders Stadium in Vegas. Wow, it's so nice. So nice. When I saw it, I was like, wow. Jennifer will probably go there every day. Greetings from Holland. Greetings from Holland. Wow. Fine. My European fans, I used to get so much people in here from Holland, Dutch, uh, Netherlands, Netherlands, of course. Just like that. I don't want to spend, the more time you spend doing this, the more you're going to take away the shape. Sometimes you don't have that much product for you to remove and sometimes it affects the shape so you got to be careful got to stop take a look so look at your nails stop take a look okay make sure that you have enough room for error sometimes you've already done perfect shaping with your hand filer with your acrylic and then you come back to it with this and oof, you mess it up only time i go underneath is i bring in the sides down like this Bring in any, take away any excess that got maybe flowed over to the side walls. A lot of people ask me techniques on shaping. I just, I don't know what to tell you. Other than the fact that this, all I do is very basic. So I just really, honestly, truly don't spend that much time shaping. The majority of my time spent is with my application or my designs. Hello from Ireland. Let's see. I'm gonna match everything cuticle to cuticle, make sure we have everything in the same length. If not, then just use your filer like this, with the finger towards you, and bring it down a little bit more, match it up, and voila. See how my pinky is almost the same length? I see a lot of people with baby pinkies. You gotta make sure the pinky is the same length as every other finger, okay? And we're done. You can go through and do a little bit of hand filing on the base of the nail if you want. Or use e-file i suggest hand filing if you do good application hand filing will eliminate your your chances of drilling into the nail too much sometimes your your application is so smooth and all of a sudden you, you use a, an e-file and then all of a sudden you drill into the nail you don't want that yeah, the bottom here, that side. you guys see i won't hit anything past the apex and it won't hit her skin because there's a bump here so i'm only doing the base of the nail first And then I'll go through with my e-file, go do the cuticle and blend everything in. 
saves me a little bit of time. I'll do a circular motion. You'll see any spots that are uneven as it'll be lighter. And you just focus in that spot a little bit more and you'll be able to bring everything in nice and even. Jamaica. All right. A lot of Islander girls, man. They love nails. Bahamas, Jamaica, DR. Big on nails there. I'm I'm sad that you guys can't get the same products we do here in the United States, to be honest with you. It's so much harder for you. I really commend you guys um, from the islands doing nails. It's really hard for you guys to get our products, and it's... It's tough for you guys to do nails in that heat and weather also, because it's such, like doing nails, like acrylic, such a, a temperature, like a, it affects it so much. So if you don't have a cool environment, it's tough. And the products too, you guys are, are don't have the same products as us over there in the islands and it's so expensive if you guys get it. Hopefully in the future, it'll broaden out more. UK. PR, yep, PR is big on nails. I can't wait to go to UK for a class. <laughs> Once everything's up, open up, and then you guys start producing new COVID strains. Just kidding. Everything is, everything is pretty much reopening right now. I'm so glad, like, everything's going back to normal. See, this takes about maybe 10 minutes, five minutes per hand. It's really quick, and then you guys can use, go use the e-file. That's when you, you use a drill. <clears throat> yes, this is gonna leave a little bit of scratch marks, so that's why you wanna use like a 100-100, a worn out one, or I don't recommend using 80-80s, because it's just too coarse, and it will just really, really eat into the acrylic. I wanna kinda smooth and bring the acrylic out a little bit. Yeah, see with any spots where it's gonna be uneven, it's gonna be a lighter blue. But if we focus a little bit more, we kind of blend everything in to more smoother together. See, so that's lighter blue there. It would be a lighter nude or lighter yellow, whatever. And the more you focus the area, the more it'll bring it down and it'll, everything will be pretty much the same, see? It means you know you're smoothing it down. That's a way for you to gauge the smoothness of your nail. Even my application is perfect. There's still spots that maybe are uneven. That's why I had to go through with my hand filer and get it all out. And then it's nice and smooth. Later on, a nice buffer or sanding band will smooth all that out. Is that how it's lighter there, there, the nude area? So I know that it's a little bit more bumpier here, so I'm gonna focus a little bit more energy here and blend it down. There you go. You can use a drill for this too. I usually do that, but a lot of people are requesting more hand filing. Because sometimes um, you guys don't know how to use the e-file that much. So I try to show some hand filing technique in case your e-file breaks. Or if, you're, if you're, you're taking the state boards and you don't know, they don't let you if you're a licensed nail tech, and this, we take your state board test, they don't let you use the e-file. That's not part of their curriculum. 
Ready, let's go. See that? Easy work. I'm not gonna use my favorite drill bit. This is my customized five and one sharp fine bit. It's my cuticle bit. So this is when that cuticle magic happens. This is a sharp bit, so I'm able to get right into the crevice. I'm telling you, this bit is everything. See now, I'm able to just move this area out because I can't get my e-file on here. But I'm able to use my drill bit for this part. That, I'll blend it upward. And I can use it up and down motion and just smooth out any of this. So later on when I buff, it'll be easy for me to buff. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this. I'm just smoothing it out, see that? It's already smooth. So it's not gonna have any resistance when I do this. When you, when you see resistance, you'll hear like a, a screech mark. This will just remove any of that. And then later when I buff, everything will be perfect. You gotta be careful with um, colors like this because if you don't get it smooth, even if you do put top coat on, you might see a little bit of ridge marks or scratch marks in your, your acrylic. I see a lot of people ask me that question and that's probably why. This way, you're flushing the cuticle, and this part is very important. This is what keeps your nails from lifting, guys. I'm not telling you to use a sharp bit if you don't know how to use it. I do have safety version of this bit, so you be more careful. It works just fine. But this is something that's necessary for you to do to seal in your acrylic so that it doesn't lift and pop off in a couple of days. Guys, see that? Up and down motion. And all it does is it removes the excess. Not remove the excess, but it smooths out those scratch marks. And because I smoothed it out already, it doesn't have any resistance. And look at how the shape is still there. The structure is there. And see this color from Wave Gel, it dries. So I can actually drill with it like a regular acrylic. Go. Yeah. Just like that. If this was bumpy, you know we can do this. It will start skipping and bouncing around. But we already did the hand filing, so we will just move this in. And I don't, we don't want, don't put too much pressure on the apex area. You don't want to drill down the apex area. So I'm just lightly going to smooth everything in. Bring in this this side right here. This sometimes it bulges out a little bit too much. Make sure you get the size. Clean up those cuticles. Look at that cuticle area.
sim. If I didn't do the hand filing earlier, here, when I do this, I have to do a lot of work with this. Sit there and Jojo drill. But with the hand filing, I'm able to just run it through just very smooth, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Love how all my students know exactly what I'm going to say. They've dealt with me in person, right, Edgar? Just like that. Nice and simple, right? Sometimes it's some, the things that you guys struggle the most with could be the simplest thing, could be the simplest fix. I believe really fix how a student advocate just by move, or just by changing the way they hold their brush. Sometimes you gotta be in person, you know? I really changed her whole life. When I, I, I switched the way she hold, held her brush, she looked at me like I was her savior. I was like, I posted my salon ready class yesterday and it's already 60% full. You guys are amazing to support in Orlando. Um, in the future, I probably will take my salon ready class in um, to uh, other states. But we have a one last class in San Jose with Davina and Tino. Once we finish off that West Coast class, we're gonna I'm come over back over East Coast. We're gonna announce our master class. That'll be for the more advanced students. We're gonna teach two days of advanced, advanced art. So we're gonna assume you already know how to do acrylic. We will demo the acrylic show shaping and techniques and stuff like that, but we won't have you practice it because we wanna focus more time on all the harder designs. Um, that'll be more for the students that have already taken our beginner advanced classes in the East Coast or anybody that's ready for that class, to be honest with you. And we're not gonna limit who's gonna come in or not. We can't, I'm not gonna judge you based on you. I'm just gonna let you know that that master class is not gonna be a class for beginners. Um, if you want to learn art, fine, because I can't say that because a lot of beginners that we've taught do really good artwork. So even if you're a beginner, you guys understand that in that class, we can't hold your hand. There's going to be a lot of people in there that are advanced, and they're going to move at the pace that the class moves, not at the student. So just know that you're going to be in there, and you're going to have to be, you have to, you at least have to hold your own, you know? A lot of the designs we teach is going to be like 10 steps sometimes. So we can't just stop for one student from the whole class to, to, be, to hold behind. In our beginner advanced class, yes, we're, we can do that, but not in our master class. It says in the name, you know? <laughs> Edgar, you see what I mean? Yeah, I was just in Denver. I always get people that request classes in states I just had visited. I don't know if it's like a a karma thing. I feel so bad sometimes. That's why. Like, we were just there. I'll leave Chicago and someone like, do a Chicago class. I'm like, no, I was just there. Where were you? I'm very light pressure. I'm not doing any pressure to the nail at all. When I do that, I'm just guiding it over. Only here I put a little bit of pressure to make sure everything is smooth. But here, remember I did my hand filing. Very light pressure. Because I don't want to dig into the nail. It's very smooth. The last thing you want to do is undo what you just did. A lot of nails actually be doing that. You get all smooth and all of a sudden, uh, I'm probably talking to the, I'm preaching to the choir right now. I'm probably, there's probably like all of you guys out there saying that, that's me, I've done that before. Where you, you did something really good and all of a sudden, you know, you, you kind of messed it up. You're like, wow, why did I do that, right? 
Been there, done that. Look at that. Boom. And e filing took me about a good 10, 15 minutes, which is an average time. Some people take about maybe 40 minutes to e file. That's too long, guys. Figure out what you're doing wrong, what you're doing excess of. Cut it down. The only thing that you should take the longest doing is your application. If anytime you're doing any other step longer than your application, then you're doing something wrong. Okay? So be careful with that. So now I'm gonna clean up underneath any excess. I don't want any excess underneath my nails. It takes away the shape. I don't have any on my thumb, I can see that. And if you don't know what my Slime Ready course is, you can definitely go to my this page here, Nerdad Studios, and check. Um, it's there. I did it live today explaining it. You've been traveling too much? <laughs> it's okay, Edgar. Edgar, I think you, you will be ready for the uh, master class. Just keep practicing. Now we're just gonna go through with a buffer and just buff through real quick make sure i don't do my edges do you free form uh no i don't i know how to but i work with tips a lot so it just works well better for me um forms okay too a lot of people use forms I haven't announced the master class yet, but it should be by the end of this week. We're gonna announce it by the end of this week. We're just trying to figure out the state, Edgar. We're gonna announce it early though. Um, it's, the master class is probably gonna be around October, but we're gonna announce it early. We're gonna take a break. After, after San Jose, we're gonna take a quick break, maybe a month, and I'm gonna do my private classes while, while I'm on break, I'm not traveling. And my, my private classes is gonna be in Orlando. It just makes it easier for me.
You're gonna wash your hands. And then we'll go to design and we're done. There's a sink right, right behind that wall there. I'm gonna switch gloves when I do design because I don't want my hand all dusty. It's all sweaty, man. So when I do the design, I'm gonna do some waves with gel marbling. I'm gonna use um, wave gels, a little blue and big blue. And also I'm gonna put a little bit of white into it in between. Um, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna need one of these. And then you're gonna need, um, I'm gonna use my ombre flat brush. This is an ombre brush right here. I'm gonna clean up real quick. So let's add a little white. Great job with gel polish is great, guys. If you need gel polish, actually for my students, if you're here, get the wave gel gel polish for the neon gels for your gel marbling. Put a little white. A little more white. And there's two different blues, big blue, small blue. Little blue, big blue. The two, I like using two different types of blues. And honestly, I wouldn't use a lighter blue, but in this case, I'm just gonna stick with that. machine out and I'm gonna use wave gels evolution is a clear one for blooming gel and just one thin coat can we first appreciate how clean this set looks now I like the shape I'm not gonna ruin the shape by doing what Painting too thick. So, quickly clean my ombre flat brush real quick. My ombre, my ombre flat is really nice. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna mix these colors up real quick. Scoop up this gel polish. So once it's bloomed, let me sure I fill these crevices up here in the corners. I don't, just want to slightly dab it. Let it bloom a little bit. Let me try some more up through here. There. I'm good. Just go ahead here. This looks easy, but a lot of students still struggle with this. Is it in? Oh, the other way. Okay, so I went that way.
Pretty, huh? So I'm doing with this finger too, except I'm gonna do just a little bit at the tip only because I wanna put some blue butterflies on this. So you gotta strategically place your uh, gel marbling where you need it, okay? So I'm doing this way. Fill in the spot a little bit. Okay, switch. Sometimes butterflies wander into the ocean too, guys, right? Going to win. And we're done with that. So now I got these nice butterflies. Butterfly, 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 butterflies. They're water transfer butterflies, which is okay because my um, Revolution Gel, Evolution Gel, the Boomy Gel, it has a little bit of a sticky surface. So I'm able to put my butterflies over fairly easy. So I got these two nice blue butterflies here. I'm gonna place into the water, dunk it a little bit. It's a little bit wet and I'll be able to peel it off and place it onto my nail. What's a good drill? And uh, I like using uh, Medicool Pro Power 20K. It's a little bit higher end, but um, if you want, if you're working like maybe a lot with it, you can definitely do, it's actually a good good one to get. Um, I like uh, the lamps. I just look for specifications. I look for anything that's uh, a lot of have a lot of UV uh, LED UV, and it has a lot of um, lights on it. So I'm pull off my butterfly now, just like that, and this baby is gonna go right here. Sometimes you have to have a sticky little surface for these to stick. Because if, it's, if it doesn't have a sticky surface, sometimes it just kind of just falls off and you don't want that. It has a little bubbling. Ooh. That's nice, right? We ain't done. Okay, so for my finishing touches, I'm going to use my gold, if I can find it. Uh, I'm using a gold, gold gel polish to kind of give it a, I'm going to put this brush away real quick, my ombre brush. That's the detailer. Mm, where is my long brush? What? There it is. This is my striper brush, my liner work brush. Oh no, that's not acetone, that's water. Let me get a little bit of gold gel polish. And give it some accent gold. 
just right around the border here. You know what? I don't want to put it right into it because I, you know what I don't want to do is I don't want to take away that blend. So I want to take that away. I'm going to do it into it. So I'm going to create a gold indent in there. Yeah, I like that better. Because I like this fade out here. I'm gonna do the cold wavy too. I don't want it straight, I want it nice and wavy, just like. Just like my marble. I want to complement my marbling and I want it to take over. There you go. I need the butterfly just as is. So now we're going to hit up with my top coat. Let's give me my shine top coat. Bring everything out together. Taco is actually really nice. It gives a nice one coat without losing any shape. A nice thin coat. Okay. And she's ready for her birthday. This is a nice blue from Wave Gel. See how that with a sticky surface, the butterfly can just lay flatly. If this the surface not here that's not sticky, what happens is that it can create bubbles. If it's dry, the water won't bond to it. You know, 
acrylic bubbles and it'll pop up on you. Like I said, they're, their designs are stuck on this wear and tear. Nice thin coat, I don't need that much top coat. This top coat is very good, very medium consistency, and it's very, very shiny, y'all. There we guys go. I can do a little bit of cuticle oil. Give the cuticle some life. But look at that top coat. Okay, let me show you guys the final look here. Let's see the cuticles. Nice and flushed. See it? How flushed that is. Shape still there. 